Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, or maybe the next couple videos, we're going to be looking at the Flux application architecture. All right, so Flux is an architecture. It's not a, a JavaScript library or framework. Um, it's used most commonly with React.js. And if you're not familiar with React.js, it's a UI library. All right, it's considered the V in MVC. It takes care of what the user sees, the, the user experience. It doesn't have anything to do with models or databases or controllers or anything like that. So that's where Flux comes in. And I, I decided to make these videos because there's not a lot of information on um, how to set up a Flux application. All right, there's a lot of methodology, a lot of talk about the concept and how it works, but there's no solid code that you can get that will really help you understand how it works and that's going to be the goal of these videos all right what we're going to do first is we're going to create a boilerplate a flux boilerplate flux and react um, that you can use to start your projects with all right and then after that we'll look into actually creating an application with that frame with that boilerplate all right so let me just talk a little bit about methodology and the concept of flux it's pretty new uh, like I said, there's not too much information on the web about it. Uh, this is the documentation site. It's, it was built and maintained by Facebook. All right, and you can see that there's a few key uh, aspects of Flux. There's actions, there's dispatch, the dispatcher, stores, and views. So the dispatcher is basically the, the central hub of the application. And it's very simple. It's just a registry of callbacks. All right, and when new data comes in, the dispatcher uses these callbacks to propagate data to the stores. Stores are just that, they're data stores. They're, they're the part of the application that handles your data, not necessarily um, dealing with a, a third-party database or anything like that, but data that's local to your application. All right, now, if you, if you want to use a database to persist data, um, you have a ton of different options and you can basically plug it into your application but flux itself isn't going to take care of persistent data I mean you could use local storage you could use something like Firebase or, or some kind of NoSQL database um, pretty much anything that's available and I'll be talking about the different options uh, a little later alright then you have actions actions are fired off from um, you can have it have them fired off on a page load or a user interaction if a user clicks a button or submits a form you can set off an action all right and actions are provided to the dispatcher in something called an action creator method which like I said most often originate from user interactions with the views all right I think if you are a uh, um, application developer then you know what a view is it's basically just the part of the application that the user sees all right, and this is where React and React components come in. So you can break each part of your application up into a component. And if you've never worked with React.js, I would suggest that you look into that first and you, you kind of at least understand the basics of it. Um, because if you don't know anything about React.js, you, you're going to get lost. All right, you don't have to be a pro at it, but you should at least know the basics and what a React component is. React works with something called state and something called properties. All right, so state is where you're going to store the local data for your application. And depending on certain states, you'll render different things in your application. All right, so you might have a form or you might have a list and there's an edit button. You click the edit button and a form opens and it's in the edit state. Okay, once you save it, you go back to whatever the list state. Um, and I'll, I'll explain this as we go along because it's a little tough to explain without actually showing you. All right, so the boilerplate I actually have available on GitHub. So you can go to uh, Brad Traversy slash Flux Boiler. And there is basically only two things you need to do to get started. You need to do npm install. That's going to go ahead and install all the dependencies. And then you want to run gulp. All right, so we're going to be using gulp as our task runner. Um, what that's going to do is it's going to compile all of the, the Flux JavaScript files into one main JS file and stick that in a folder called dist. All right, and then you can run the index.html file from the dist folder. 
All right, but I'll show you all that as we go. All right, so you basically the source folder is where you we're going to be doing all the work. In the JS folder, you can see we have actions, components, constants, the dispatcher, stores, utils. This is where all the um, if you're going to work with an API or some kind of database, you can do that from here. You can make AJAX calls and all that. Vendors and then a main JS file, which is basically the entry to all of the rest of the files. All right. So uh, one more thing, if you if you don't know React JS at all, uh, I would suggest looking at well, even if you do and you want to learn more about Flux, uh, I have a, a course called Face Getting Started with Facebook Flux on Eduonix, and um, if you're interested in that, here's the link. Um, it, it's going to talk about everything that I'm going, going to be talking about now and more, so I would suggest that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I'm going to do is just create a new uh, folder called Flux Boiler, and we're going to create that, recreate it together, just so you can understand what's going on. I mean, you could just get the the actual uh, boilerplate here, but you might not know what to do after that. All right, so we'll do that, and then we'll take a look at building an application with it. So what we'll do is create all the files and folders first, and then we'll start to add the code and look at how Flux works. All right, so first thing we're going to do is create a source folder. All right, and then inside there, we're going to create an index.html file. Okay, then we're going to create a CSS folder that's going to hold all the CSS. And we might as well create a style.css. Now, in the actual Flux Boiler, there's also a Bootstrap CSS file. Um, you don't have to use Bootstrap, but I included it just because um, it's just something to get you going as far as um, you know user interface. So we also want our JS folder. That's where the majority of our work is going to be. Uh, we want to create all the different parts of the architecture. So we need our actions folder. All right, and in there we're going to create a file called uh, appactions.js. All right, and most of these folders will only have one file in them. Uh, for instance, the dispatcher, we'll create that. All right, and then that's going to have a file called app dispatcher. Oops, not a PowerPoint. All right, next thing we're going to need is a constants folder. And this is all constants is going to be is just an object that holds the different um, action creator constants. All right, so this is going to be called app constants.js. And you're not, you don't have to use the, this naming convention, um, but I find that it's, it's, it's very simple and easy to remember. And that's this is mostly what you'll find if you're going to look around on the web for other Flux applications. All right, so let's create a components folder. This is basically the view. This is going to be where all the React um, components go. And for now, we're just going to create the core core app component app.js. Okay, so basically. All the other components we create are going to be nested into this one. We also want um, our stores folder. Now you're not. Whoops! I just want to uh, make that lowercase. You're not limited to just having one store. For instance, if you have a blog, you might have a post store and you might have a category store. But what we're going to do is just create one called App Store, and then everything will go in there just to simplify it. All right, so this will be called appstore.js. All right, then we're going to have our utils folder. And that's where 
we can do our Ajax requests and stuff like that. Um, let's see, we also want vendors. And that's where you can include jQuery, um, the bootstrap JavaScript file, things like that. And let's create our main JS. Okay, that's that's going to be the gateway to all of the other ones. This is where we're going to include the main app component, and then we'll have access to all the other components through that app component. All right, so those are the JS files. Now we're going to create our package.json file, which is going to include all the dependencies and everything like that. We're not going to run npm install yet to install them, but we just want to get it set up. All right, so we can actually use the command line to, to set that up. So what I'm going to do is open up. I'm using a, a utility called git bash that you can get for Windows, but feel free to use this, just the standard Windows command line. All right, so we're going to do npm init. Oh, and obviously make sure you have Node.js installed. If you don't, just go to nodejs.org and click the big download button. It's really simple to get set up. All right, and once you have Node installed, you have access to the npm command. So flux boiler, that's good. Version's good. Description, um, we'll say flux architecture uh, starter. I guess starter boiler, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Entry point, that's fine for now. Author. Feel free to put your own name. And that should set up a package.json file. Okay, I'm actually going to add the project to Sublime Text. Where is it? Where is it? Dev Flux Boiler. Here we go. All right, so if we look at the package.json, it has everything we just went over. Um, what we want to do now is add our dependencies. All right, so we're going to go right here, put comma, and we're going to set up our dev dependencies. Okay, these are dependencies that are only needed in development. So there's a few we need to set. So we're going to need to be to use npm. So we need to use Browserify. All right, so we're going to get that set up. All right, and we're going to just use the latest version. So we're going to just have a, a asterisk. OK, we're also going to need the actual flux module. And what that does is it provides us the dispatcher and a couple other things that we need. OK, we'll get the latest version of that. We're going to want gulp as our task runner. Um, we're going to use something called Reactify. And what that does is it transforms the JSX code into JavaScript. Now, JSX is um, it's the syntax we use in React components. And it's basically XML inside JavaScript. All right, And that's what we use to create the, the user interfaces and the components. So this takes care of actually converting that to JavaScript uh, when we actually compile the application. All right, so that's going to be the latest version. And then we have one called uh, Vinyl Source Stream. I'm not exactly positive on what this one does. I just know it has to do with um, transforming strings into data streams. All right, and then one last thing here is we need object assign. All right, and that's used in the at in the store. So we also need uh, dependencies, and all we really need here for now is React itself. All right, so we're going to say React, and we're going to be using uh, zero point fourteen point seven, and then we also want to include React DOM. All right, if you're using the latest, latest version, which at this time is this version, uh, you'll need to include React DOM as well. 
So that's it for the package.json file. So we can go ahead and save that. And we're not going to run it just yet. And I guess the last thing that we'll create is the gulp file. All right, so you want to create a file called uh, gulpfile.js. All right, so that is the file structure. Obviously, we haven't add, added any code yet, so we'll do that in part two.